Thank you for joining us this long weekend. I'm in the house of God. We trust that the word of God, the ministry of the word, will do you good. Let's just pray a word of blessing over everyone that is here today and those gathered under the sound of my voice. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the ministry of your word. We thank you that your word shall not return to your void, but it shall always, always, always accomplish that which you have purposed and destined for your word to accomplish, Lord. You sent your word and the centurion servant was healed. You sent your word and the Israelites were healed in the wilderness. Now send your word to our hearts and to our lives, Lord God, and let it bring forth fruit and results that you see fit and that you desire. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray this morning. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So we are reading to you from Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23, if you are tracking with us. And it says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Verse 24 is also key to what we are saying. It says, though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his right hand. And as we uh, read in the invite about the road to the mayor's wall, where the two disciples walked a long distance and they were engaged in deep conversation. And in the course of that conversation, the Lord joined them in that conversation and began to answer some of the questions that they had at that point in time. And uh, in this morning's message, I want us to see that the moment we give our lives to Christ, we commence on a journey. For the disciples on the road to Emmaus, an important journey commenced, one that ended in a phenomenal way in which their eyes were open and they saw the Lord in an entirely different light. And as we walk with the Lord, as we give our lives to the Lord, we commence a journey with the Lord. And it's not a journey that we walk alone, but it's a journey that He walks with us. And it's up to us to have the insightfulness to sense, to know and realize that God is with us and that He's walking with us in this journey. Amen. And so, in light of that, we're going to look at this scripture this morning and just let it speak to our hearts this morning. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and He delights in His way. And the Hebrew word for step in the context of the scripture that we read it speaks about companionship and it speaks about our walk of faith and that we will never walk alone for the Lord is our traveling guide and He is our companion. And so we're going to look at it a little more closely this morning and it speaks about the steps of a good man. First, God has an order for your steps. And the word step means one's going. It speaks about the way one goes. It speaks about the direction that you take in life. And all of these meanings portray to us the path of life. Amen. And the idea is that when we give our hearts to the Lord, we embark on a journey. A journey that is planned by God. A journey that is willed by God. A journey that is ordained by the Lord. And in the context of what we are reading this morning, we are going to see that the Lord has a specific plan for every one of His children. A specific plan for every one of His children. We were not saved to wander aimlessly through life. And I pray that this morning this word will arrest our hearts this morning. For those who are perhaps wandering through life aimlessly, or if you feel you are wandering aimlessly, or if you feel there's no purpose to your life, or if you feel there's no direction to your life, then these are the type of people we want to arrest with this morning's message and get you to see from Psalm 37 that the Lord is speaking to you and that you've not been put on earth to wander aimlessly, but that He has put you here to serve a specific plan and a purpose. Amen. And that God has a specific plan. So we were not saved to wander aimlessly through this life. And whilst this speaks to us about the path of life, it's not any old path that you will choose. And so Christian parents are advised to constantly pray for their children 
and pray over their children and the path that they will one day take. It's not up to us as parents to determine the path that our children will take, but it is our prerogative to pray that God will lead them in the path that He has purpose for them. And as we begin to see God lead them down those paths, we can rejoice in life that we were part and parcel of God's great plan to bring this child, to bring these children into the world and see them step into God's plan for their lives, if not for yourself. But yes, this word is applicable to you as well. Amen. And so let's look at it a little more. So from the day you got saved, you commenced on a journey with Christ. How many of you know that we are on a journey? God loves taking walks. In the beginning of time, God went God into the garden, he wanted to walk with Adam. All through the Bible, all the patriarchal figures, from David to Abraham to Moses, to all the great men and women of God, you will see something very synonymous in everyone's life. They constantly traveled. Yes? Amen? Isn't it true? They constantly traveled. Why is that? Because God was taking them on a journey. He didn't want them to see places. It's not so much the places, but it's what he wanted to teach them, show them, and reveal to them about their lives and about his plan for their lives. And it's the same with us. We begin a journey when we give our hearts to the Lord. And the Lord is taking us on this journey of development. It's a journey of growth. It's a journey of illumination. It's a journey of revelation. And that's why we say it is not good to get old in the Lord. The body may perish as we get older, but it's important that we constantly grow in revelation and knowledge of God. Amen. That's what's important. And so Hebrews 12 verse 1 gives us some, some very insightful advice. It says, let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. And it's important that we see this this morning. Everyone has to run a unique race. We cannot run the race that someone else is running. We've got to run the race that is marked out for us. And it's a unique race. And so oftentimes what children of God tend to do, which is, a, which is a common mistake, is that we look at other Christians and we try to emulate them. We look at another Christian person and we see the success that they're experiencing and what they are doing and we try to emulate them or become like them. And that is where we go wrong. We cannot run the race that another person is running. We must run the race that is set before us. And that's what Hebrews 12 verse 1 points out to us. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. And the Bible says that we have to run this race with patience. Because how many of you have realized now, if you say a little over five years, that Christianity is not a hundred meter dash. We all got saved with such passion. And such desire. We were swept into the kingdom of God. And we thought in the next five years, our lives are going to change so dramatically. I'm going to be the next David. I'm going to be the next Joseph. I'm going to be the next Elijah. And that didn't happen. But it doesn't mean to say there's something wrong with God's plan for your life. It's just the kind of ideas we had for our lives. And God has shown us and shown me over the years that it takes patience. It's a long distance race. So don't run it too fast. Run it in sync with God. Because it requires patience. What you're hoping for, what you're praying for, the changes you want to see in your life are not going to happen overnight. The great things, the big plans are not going to happen overnight, as we will see. So it's a long distance race, and we need to, we need to uh, pace ourselves with that. Amen. Are you good with that? And so he says in the word that I will bless your coming and your going from this time, from this day forward. And what day is that? It's the day we give our hearts to the Lord. He says, I will bless your coming and your going from this time forward. And Proverbs 3 verse 6 gives us such excellent advice. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Remember, we are speaking about direction in life. We are speaking about the paths that your children will take. We are speaking about the paths that you are on. You are on a path presently right now. At the end of this message, I cannot pray that you will find another path. You are on the path God has purposed for you. And the thing is, we are frustrated and we are perplexed because we are not seeing the things we want to see. Because we are not understanding the race, the unique race that God has put before us. And it's a unique race because it's not going to be like everyone else's race. And what's sad about this thing, the downside about this thing, is that you cannot ask anyone for advice because the advice they'll give you is to quit what you're doing and do what I'm doing. 
And that's the biggest mistake you can make. Don't ever look to people for that advice. Look to God for this type of advice. And say, Lord, you saved me. Lord, you called me. Lord, you put my feet on the King's Highway. What is your plan for my life? Help me to stay on this path that you have purposed for my life. Guide my path. And Proverbs 3 verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge Him. Now what does it mean in all your ways? I'm not going to preach on that this morning, but I'm going to give you an essential a truth with regards to that scripture. It means whenever it comes to question time or to decision making time, you are to stop and you are to consult with God. Most of us travel nowadays with the help of your telephone, your, your, your cell phone that's got some sort of maps built into it. And, you, and, and the map tells you, or the instruction tells you to follow this road. And you don't deviate from it until it tells you to deviate. And it's the same in life. Once we've been put on the King's Highway, stay on this path that He has purposed and chosen for your life. And when the time is right, He will give you course directions. He'll say to you, turn left, turn right. And He'll make it clear to you. But if you are to make important decisions where life is concerned, where job is concerned, those are times when you must consult with God. It's important when you make life altering decisions that you consult with the Lord. If you're moving country, moving suburb, moving house, those are important decisions. Consult with God because it factors into God's plan for your life. And God has chosen the best for you as you will see. So when it speaks about the steps of a good man, it speaks about steps that are directed by God. And like we said right at the beginning of this year, this is a year of correction, it's a year of direction, it's a year of protection, it's a year of provision, and it's a year of perfection. But if you're going to experience all of that, we've got to be willing to be corrected by God. Amen. So this is a path that God has chosen for us in which we are directed by Him, guided by Him, and led by Him. Never forget that the Lord, the great shepherd, is leading us, and we are His sheep. Or have we forgotten that portion of scripture which says Jesus is the good shepherd? Have we forgotten that? When last did we consult with him and say, good shepherd, which way are you leading today? What is the path for my life? Where are the pastures green that you have in store for me? The good shepherd, the good shepherd, remember that. So let's move on. So the steps of a good man. And the step speaks about the path that God has chosen for you. Amen. And I pray that this morning as you're listening to this message, just becoming familiar and you're becoming content with the path that God has chosen for you. Maybe all up till now you've been questioning, why has God led me here? Why has God led me to do this? You've been questioning and wanting to change lanes. This morning just become comfortable in the fact that He has led you and He is leading you currently. Amen. And so let's look at the next important aspect of this verse. It says, a good man. A good man in the person or in the context of the scripture, is a person that has been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and whose faith has been solely placed in Christ and what Christ has done for us on Calvary's cross. The righteous or the good man that the Bible is referring to is someone who has been made righteous by Christ. Now when it says a good man, yeah, it's not speaking about a good man who fed a beggar, beggar down the road or gave up clothing to some charity organization. All of those things are nice though, that's good, that's charity, that's arms. But the context of the scripture is referring to a righteous man. And this morning if you're going to be led by God, this morning if you're going to pray and be effective in prayers and see prayers come to pass, one of the things you need to settle in your heart is this, that I am a righteous man. I am a righteous woman of God. And don't let past mistakes influence you and drown out the truth of God's word this morning, that I am a righteous man. And the Bible says that the steps of a good man, the steps of a righteous man, if you are happy with that, are ordered of the Lord. Now let us look at some of the scriptures that pertain to a righteous person. Do you believe you're a righteous person this morning? Don't raise your hands. We're not looking for an altar call. But in your heart, do you believe you are righteous? You've been made righteous by Christ. Do you believe that? And if you are righteous, then God sees you as righteous. And if He sees you as righteousness, as, as the righteousness of God, then listen, this is what the Word of God promises us. It says that the wealth of the unrighteous is stored up for the righteous. So which part about that are you going to stumble upon in your faith? The wealth of the unrighteous is laid up for the righteous. 
if you are the righteousness of God, this pertains to you. And the Bible speaks about the righteous in this way. It says that the children of the righteous will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed, says Psalm 112. It says wealth and riches are in the house of the righteous, and his righteousness endures forever. And then David goes on to say, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, or his seed begging bread. Amen. It says the name of the Lord is as a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. Amen. So if it, if it has so much to say about the righteous, then this morning we can accept that the, the Lord ordains the steps of the righteous. <clears throat> we are not perfect, not even good. However, we have become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus who has imputed his righteousness to us. And the Bible speaks about a righteous man. And again, if one has to look at these words in the Greek context, in the Hebrew context, it, it, it conveys so much of a different meaning to us. So much of a different meaning. It takes on such a different tone. I must admit that I've read Psalm 37 so many times. I like the other aspects about it. The, the aspects that speak about, uh, uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, or we see begging bread. If I read Psalm 37, that leaps out for me. But I've overlooked this one for so long until someone sent me a message with regards to this passage of scripture. And it says the steps of a good man, which means the path that God has chosen. A good man, a righteous man. I've been accepted in the faith and made righteous by God. So that's, that, that's important. That ministers to me. And when it says a man, it's not referring to the gender of a person. It's speaking about a brave or a valiant person. In God. And how many of you know it calls for courage just to walk this path? Yeah. Come on now. If you've been walking it long enough, you'll know what I'm saying. And you, you agree with what I'm saying. It calls for courage to be a child of God. It calls for courage to be a Christian. It calls for courage to be stand up and counted in this day and age. And right now, in terms of whatever's going through and going on in the world and in the country, God is looking for courageous men to stand up and to be counted. It calls for courage. And today realize this, we are called, we are chosen, we are accepted, and we are loved. Remember that, that you are who he says you are. You are a powerful warrior in God, a valiant person. That is what a good man is. And then the following word is the word that really brings this whole verse together. And it's the word ordered. The steps of a good man are ordered. The steps, the path of a good man, a righteous man, a brave man, a valiant man has been ordered. Now let's look at that word ordered. The word ordered means established. Can I say that again? Established as in past tense. Not in established as in future tense, but past tense, established. And the Hebrew word means to decree, to make good, to ordain, to succeed, to raise up. So in other words, the Holy Scriptures are saying that the journey of our lives has been decreed. It has been ordered and ordained by God. Can we see that? So it's not like God is just stepping into our lives in the present and He's saying, let me lead you. Let me ordain your steps. He is coming into our lives with His pre-ordained plan. Think about that for a moment. Now, I know a lot of people are off this week. There's a lot of celebrations going on, a lot of birthdays, so there's celebrations going on wherever. There's brides, there's fires that are burning even now as we speak. How many of you know it takes planning? Somebody has decided to host a Sunday dinner. Someone has decided to host a Sunday brunch, but it takes planning. And the people that are invited to the function come to a function that has been planned. And so when they come to the planned function, they step into the provision that has been made available. How awesome is it to think that you're not just living your life aimlessly, but you are living a life that has been planned. It's very hard for us to, to, to mentally ascend to this. We know this, but to actually ascend, to get into that realm of faith, where you say today, this Sunday, the 20th, of March is a day that God has ordained for me. It's a planned day. This is not a chance that we are here in church. You 
here, I am here. It's not coincidence. This has been planned. And amazingly, every other day of your life is planned and ordained of God. So God's got an ordained plan. He's not just putting you here on earth and saying, let's see what you figure out with your life. Do you want to be an artist? Oh, well, go ahead. There's a piece for just paint a, a nice landscape for me. While you're busy with that, let me have a look at this guy. What do you want to be? No, God's got an ordained plan. And it's wonderful because when God made us, He put certain skills in us. That's why you do the job that you do. That's why you do the kind of vocation that you do. Because you've got skills inside of you. And so we cannot walk contrary to God's plan with the skills we have. Only He knows what He's placed inside of us. So we walk according to that plan. Amen. And that's what makes it so comforting and brings it brings us a, a, a different perspective to it. That's how much He loves us. He loves us enough to plan out every step of our lives. Come on now. And we as parents, do we not do that with our children, especially when they're young? We want to map out every day for their life. When they get ready to go to school in the morning, you pack their box, their lunch box for them. You want to map out their day. You want to plan their lives. It's the same with God. We are His children, and He wants to map out our lives. In fact, He has this plan that is mapped out for us. <clears throat> so watch this. That doesn't mean there will never be trials and tribulations for us as the natural sheep. Um, go astray from the shepherd. So do we as spiritual sheep go astray from our Heavenly Father. But in spite of our failures and shortcomings, the Lord will not cast us aside. The Bible reveals that His sole intention is to see you succeed and to prosper. The question is whether you're going to come into agreement with God's plan for your life. And I think this morning at this point in the message, this is when the message takes on a very sobering tone and direction. Are you willing to submit more to that plan this morning? Are you willing to pray in your heart with me this morning and say, Lord, I'm submitting more to that plan. It's been a while since I had an opportunity to listen to a message like this that has challenged the path that I've taken, that has challenged your very plan for my life, but I recognize that you do have a plan for my life. And this morning my prayer is, to come into alignment with that plan. I want to submit more to that plan. So it's a very challenging one that church this morning. And I pray that you pray that with me this morning. And that you say, Lord, I want to come more into alignment with that plan for my life. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purposes prevail. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purposes prevail. Now I'd like to read to you from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that extends that line of thinking. But listen to this so closely as it ministers to us. Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says, for we are God's handiwork, His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus anew, that we may do the works which God has predestined, planned beforehand for us. That we may do the works He has planned for us. And then listen to this. Taking paths which He has prepared ahead of time. Long before they came up with COVID. Long before the pandemic broke up. God had plans and purposes for your life. And God has a path for your life. And even now, we need to pray more fervently than ever and say, Lord, in light of everything that's happening, the confusion that is breaking out in the world, make your path more clear for us, that we may stay on the path, that we may walk the path you have purpose for us, that the church as a whole may walk the path that you have for us. Amen. So we see he speaks about paths that he has prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. Listen to what he says, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now, I like to put it to you this way. It's like when you run this race, uh, the two oceans, the Comrades Marathon, you know, if you embark on the race and you begin to run the race, along the race, they have refreshment points at the right and strategic times for you to stop grab something to drink, put some water over your face or pour it over your head and move on with the race. If 
you run a different race and choose a different path, there won't be provisions along that path. But if you run the race that they have commanded and prepared and planned and put out there, you will find the refreshments along the path that this race holds for you. It's the same with the plan of God for your life. And the paths that He has destined for us are lined with the goodness and the provision of God. Everything you will ever need, you will find along the path that God has for you. And we see that in Jeremiah 29, 11. He corroborates it. He says, God has a plan for your life, and that plan is good. God is directing your steps so that you can fulfill the plan He has for you. And as you allow, He will show you the right choices to make and lead you in the best path. He will show you which step to stay and the right way to go. And the Bible says, for the path of the just is as a shining light, shining brighter and brighter to a perfect day. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time. And this path that we are taking, some of, it, some of us are walking it for 30 years now, some of us 20 years, some of us 15 years. We all have different paths and different lengths in this journey. But all the same, let us encourage one another. Let us pray for one another as we are taking this journey. But it calls for obedience because many times we want to change direction. When it's going well, we want to stay on the path. But when it's not going well, we want to change direction. And this is the time to trust God more. We must obey Him even more. We have to look for opportunities to be obedient. It's not always going to come knocking on your door. It's better to obey than to sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Amen. So let us look at some examples in Scripture of people that walked in the plan of God for their lives. And one such example that springs to mind is Abraham. How many of you are familiar with old Abraham? Father Abraham, as he's formerly known. Though he feared from the path several times, God kept bringing him on the path. From the time God called him out of his father's house, Abraham embarked on a journey. And again, we are talking about paths. We are talking about journeys. Abraham commenced on a journey, and God had a plan for his life. But God never gives up on his plan where your life is concerned. We sometimes give up on the plan, but he never gives up on the plan. Because God's convinced the plan he has, is a good plan. We lose heart. We lose faith in it because we don't see what we want to see. It's not yielding the fruit we want it to yield. So we think it's not a good plan and we give up on it. But God never gives up on His plan because He's brought it through from beginning to end and He says it's a good plan. So He starts with Abraham and Abraham leaves his father's house. And God says, come to a place that I will show you. And so He begins the journey. But we see that He goes off the journey. For one, he goes to Egypt. And then God's going to bring him out of Egypt. Because it was never his plan. And then he picks up a hitchhiker along the way by the name of Hagar. And that leads to problems down the line. It was never in God's plan for his life. And then a little later down the line comes Ishmael. Which was never God's plan for his life. But Ishmael comes along nevertheless. But God still stays committed to his plan for his life. And in the process of time, God gives him Isaac. And I want you to see this morning, the application to us is that like Abraham, God's got a plan for your life. And like Abraham, God's got an Isaac for your life. You may have been settling for Egypt along the way, Hagar here and there, giving birth to Ishmael here and there, but God still stays focused on his plan. And his plan is Isaac. And his plan is something that's going to bless you. And God saw his plan through in Abraham's life. No matter how many mistakes he made, and those were big mistakes. Almost ended his marriage. Firstly, Pharaoh wanted to take his wife. Then a little later, he had a marital issue with Hagar and his wife. More marital problems. Amen. And then he gave birth to Ishmael, and Ishmael is basically the father of the Middle East today. All right, and we won't get into that contentious issue. But still, God stayed proper and focused on His plan, which was to give birth to Isaac. And when God looks at your life, God is looking to the end of your life when you give Isaac. 
But along the way, we give God a rough time. We change directions, we change partners, we change businesses, we change church, change clothing, change churches, change ministries, change everything. But God says, okay, you can change, 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 but I'm still going to get you easy. It can come easy or it can come difficult. It's up to you. God said to Jonah, go preach to the Ninevites, and he refused. So here's the point. You can come with a submarine, the belly of a whale, or God will get you there in good speed and with good transport. It's up to you how do you want to come. Do you want to come fighting <laughs> with a fish dragging you, pulling you, or are you going to come willingly? This morning I urge you, come willingly. Let's comply with his plan and his wishes for our life. Amen. It was God's best to give him Isaac, and God still stuck to his plan. And there are many of us that have failed God along the way. This is not a message of condemnation. I'm here with you in the same context. We've failed God. We've turned our backs on God. We've turned. We've changed directions. Made some mistakes. But God's still faithful. He says, when I got you saved, I got Isaac in mind for you. And I'm still going to give you Isaac. Doesn't matter how old you are, how many mistakes you've made, I know how to get you back on track. And this is the good thing about God's plan. God's got a plan and God constantly refers to his plan for your life in order to get you back on track. Amen. Isn't that good? And so watch this. So David is another person that we can look at in terms of God's plan for his life. So God took David out of the sheepfold from tending sheep. He brought him to the battlefield much later in his life, the battlefield. And then from the battlefield, God took him into the wilderness, the next stage of his life. And from the wilderness, God brought him to the throne. So there are four important stages to David's life. The pasture, the battlefield, and these are steps going up in life. And we have similar steps. We have similar uh, uh, episodes in our lives, stages in our lives that we go through. So God took him from the pasture, brought him to the battlefield. He dealt with Goliath. He dealt with the Philistines. Then he had the wilderness period, another stage in his life. And then finally, the throne, where God brought, brought him to the throne. You see, God consults with his plan, plan regularly and aligns your life accordingly. So this morning, this message is all about tweaking and tuning your life in terms of God's plan for your life. Amen. So I don't know how far off the path you veered this morning, but will you pray this with me this morning? Let's say this prayer together. Say, today, God is ordering my steps. I am walking in the way He leads. He has placed me on a firm rock. My every step is directed and secured by Him. Amen. Praise God. So that's an important part. The, the whole verse hinges around this word ordered, which means an ordained, preordained life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now you may still question this morning, has God got a preordained path, purpose and destiny, destiny for my life? Why is that? Because God understands life better than we do. We don't know why He chose to have us alive in this day and age. I remember saying this in a sermon once before. Are you happy being a Christian in this day and age? Or would you rather be in Paul's age? Contending with lions, with whippings, with imprisonments, with scourges. Would you rather be in the first century church? Were you quite happy where you find yourself today? Make peace with your conditions and let's move on with God. Amen. Now notice this. It says, he delights in his way. The one who allows the Lord to order his life, the Lord delights in him and won't leave him. And when you look this up in the Amplified Version, it says, when God delights in His way, He busies Himself with your every step. When you are walking the path God has chosen for you, destined for you, He delights Himself in your path, and He busies Himself with your every step. He busies Himself. He engages Himself in your life. How many of you would like more of that? For God to be engaged, so engaged with every part of your life. He's, he, he's just making a nuisance of himself. He's saying, come, let's, let's work this out. Let's work your job situation out. Let's start your business. Come, uh, let's get involved. Let me get involved with you. 
What's happening with your family? You've got this issue. Come, let me get involved with you. That's what he's saying. He wants to busy himself with every step in your life. Isn't that just amazing? Now, many of us are older, uh, are older in life and our parents have passed on. But we remember a time when our parents wanted to be involved in our lives to that extent. And some of us felt like, you know what, I need to shirk off dad's brain. I need to shirk off mom's uh, interference all the time, you know. I'm old enough, I can make decisions for, uh, for myself. But you miss it somehow, you miss it. That whole thing that came from your parents. Now what he's saying here is that he busies himself, himself with every step in your life. And watch this, the Lord shall go before you a light by day, a pillar of fire by night. He shall exalt the ditch that is in front of you, and he shall level every mountainous obstacle that stands in your path. He shall smoothen the rough places that you will come to in life. Amen. And he shall break asunder every gate of iron and brass in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see that God took Isaac through a period called Sitna, a period called Isaac, and God brought him to Rehoboth. And again, I want to bring this into the context of what we are saying this morning. Excuse me. And I want you to see that just like God did in Abraham's life, God wants to do in your life. And my life for that matter. And like he did in Isaac's life, he took him through Sitna, the place of strife. He took him through Isaac, the place of quarreling, and brought him to Rehoboth. And real God speaks about the path of progression in life. I was sitting and chatting with the Lord one day, just communicating and asking Him about certain outstanding things in my life. And asking the Lord, how come that prophecy is not fulfilled? How come that thing I've prayed for hasn't materialized in my life? And this is what the Lord calls for me to see and understand. And I want to bring it into the context of what we're saying here. Is that God knows how long you're going to live. You see, sometimes we live like... Today is the last. This year is my last. So all those dreams I want to fulfill now. But God looks at you and God is the author and the finisher of your faith. God knows you're going to live to 70. He knows you're going to live to 80, to 90, to 120. I don't know what He has purpose for you. The number of your days, He has numbered. But when God looks at your life, He can't give you everything at age 50. Because then you'll have nothing to live for in your 60s, nothing to live for in your 70s. So sometimes we want everything and we want it in our 50s, we want it in our 40s. And when we look at uh, Isaac's life, God took him through Isaac, Sitna, and finally Rehoboth. There is a broad place God is going to bring us to each and every one of us. But it can't come too soon. Sometimes we are not ready for Rehoboth. Sometimes we are not ready for that big breakthrough. And so, and so God's going to take us through this path of progression. And we need to see this, that our lives are progressing. The saddest thing is to think that your life is not progressing. In God, your life is progressing. The path of the just is as a shining light, shining brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Amen. Now, how do you know you're in real God when you're ready to embrace your enemies? <laughs> you're ready to embrace your enemies. You're ready to forgive your enemies. You're ready to serve your enemies and show them hospitality for that matter. But watch this, the comfort is this, when the Lord delights in your way, the Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace and watch the Lord break out on your enemies. Only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. And that's what you can expect towards the end of your journey as you move towards real God. Amen. And there's another part of this uh, scripture that ministers powerfully to us. It says, though he falls... Now, in the dictionary, when you look at it, it says, in spite of the fact, or even if, it tells us that sometimes the way is dark, we falter and we fail, but the Holy Spirit says, in spite of what goes on, in spite of the fact that you may fall, you shall not be utterly cast down. Amen. And we are going to fail at some point or the other. There's going to be hiccups in life. But the great consolation is this, though a righteous man falls, the Lord shall lift him up each and every time. Though a righteous man falls seven times, the Lord shall raise him up in Jesus' name. 
The Bible says he makes our feet like hinds feet. He will keep you from falling by making sure you stand on solid ground. Amen. And then the last aspect of the scripture is this. It says that the Lord holds us in his hand. Please understand this. It says, though a righteous man stumbles and falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord holds him in his hand. The God who holds the universe in his hand has you in his hand. Think about that for a moment. It may look like your life is spinning out of control. It may look like things are not working out in your life. But the God of the universe, who has the universe in his hand, has you in his hand. And therefore, you are in strong and capable hands. Amen. So, as we draw things to a close, as we bring this message to an end, there, there are some pointers that I want to bring up to you this morning and share with you. If we lose our way, if we get lost along the way, he knows the game plan better than you do. Again, if we have to refer to something like sport, how many of you love soccer? And you've watched it so many times, you back that team that fails or loses most of the time. You know what I'm talking about. And then you watch the game and you watch your team losing. Then you look at the bench and you look at the coach and you say, listen, coach, we're losing here. Even though I'm just a spectator, we're losing. What are you planning to do? And you'll find them, the technical staff, they're looking at their computers there and they're working something out because when they went into the game, they went into it with a plan. And if things are not working out, they know how to change the team, reselect players, reorganize the team because they know the plan. Sometimes the players lose sight of the plan. The manager will tell them before they hit the pitch, this is what we want you to do against this team. This is a strong team. This is an attacking team. And we want you to adopt this strategy. But when they go in, they lose sight of the strategy. And then they become frazzled. But the people on the bench have not lost sight of the plan. And I want you to know that God is in our corner. He has not lost sight of the plan. It may feel like you veer to the left or to the right too much. But God hasn't lost sight of the plan. This morning he knows how to get you back into the game. Amen. Come on now. I'm praying God's bringing you back into full alignment. Bringing you back onto the path. And bringing you back into the game. Amen. No matter what you are up against. Listen to this statement. No drama is greater than your destiny. No drama is greater than your destiny. Your destiny will trump drama in Jesus' name. You will make it to the other side. Provision and supply is attached with his divine plan. Where God guides, he provides. God's will is God's will. Where he leads, he feeds. Listen, along this path, he has the right job or jobs lined up for you. He has your life partner lined up for you along this path and along this plan that he has for your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. So let's take a moment to pray this morning. Let's pray that people's lives will come into alignment with God. Let's pray that people will have obedient hearts to obey God this morning. In terms of the word that has gone out, in terms of those that are here this morning, that they will heed the word of God. Keep this advice and fall in alignment with God's plan. Amen. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning. As we just take a moment to pray and a moment to pause in your presence and pray, Father God, that you will help us this morning, each and every one of us that are bowed in your presence, Lord. You have a wonderful plan. And according to Psalm 37, Lord, it says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Now, Father, you need to order some of us back into alignment. And I pray that that's going to happen this morning. I pray that over the pastors of this church. I pray that over the elders of the church. I pray that over the deacons of the church. I pray that over the congregants at large. And then, Father, some of us need to start taking steps in the right direction. I pray that you will order our steps according to your plan for our lives. That, Lord, as a ministry, we'll be taking the next step. Last week we spoke about next level operation, next level ministry, that we will begin to see that happening in our lives, Lord God. And we 
begin to see that happening in the ministry, Lord, as you take us into the next step, the next stage, and the next phase for our lives. Lord, the steps of a good man, the steps of a ministry are ordered of the Lord. Father, I pray this over the business people of the house too, that the steps of the righteous business people will be ordered of the Lord. Father, I pray this over families in the name of Jesus, that all the steps of a good family, the righteous families, will be ordered of the Lord. Father, these mercies we ask, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen.